I gather her name is Jake G, the alleged accomplice slash paramour to this notorious thief called the Bishop, responsible for stealing Cleopatra's eggs. Did I remind you that theft of valuable museum property is punishable by the law up to 10 years of imprisonment? Man, I think you got a wrong guy here. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing here, so... Let me stop you right there. A couple of hours ago, you posted this video on TikTok. Cause there I was again with two fish up on the street. We run over the cops cause they were chasing after us. Egg in my bag, I was there. I remember it all true. Yep, that's not me. I mean, we're just wearing the same clothes. And the one could have written that song. I was at home all night. Cause there I was again in the party at night. We're dancing on the cover and we stole the second egg in the vault. I was there, I remember it all too well. Yeah. Let's try this one more time. Who do you work for? Tell me the identity of the bishop. Well, the bishop is the Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman as in Gal Gadot? Yeah, it is the Wonder Woman. You think this is a joke? Get over here! What the hell, man? I'm out of here! What the heck? Hey, you tracked me down again just to beat me like I'm guilty. So casually cruel, you're a douche I'm being honest, left a crumpled up piece of paper lying there Cause I remember it all, 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 all too well What is up Cinephiles? Welcome back to Screen Kings Today's movie review will be talking about Netflix's biggest and most expensive original film to date, with a crowning budget of $200 million, is the action keeper comedy film Red Notice, written and directed by Ross and Marshall Thurber. And in it, we have three of the biggest Hollywood stars of this generation The Rock, Deadpool, and Wonder Woman. What a spectacular powerhouse casting, and sometimes a great casting is all you need to carry an entire movie. And true enough, the chemistry of these three people just off the charts. They could be just sitting on a room just bantering and quipping and this movie will still hit number one on Netflix. Now, Wayne Johnson here plays an FBI agent named John Hartley. He's a great profiler of art thieves and he's after this world's greatest art thief. Self-proclaimed of course, Nolan Booth played by Ryan Reynolds. But then the real villain of the film is Gal Gadot who plays the bishop who's like no, I'm the world's greatest art thief. The character archetypes that they play, most especially for Dwayne Johnson and Ryan Reynolds, is not really different from any previous roles that they have played. So I would say that this one plays to their strengths, though it doesn't really push the actor to any new places if that's you're looking for. But all the same, it's still fun to watch the banter, the bickering chemistry between these two actors. We have a body cop chemistry between them. They're pretty much a solid duo. Ryan Reynolds here is off again to his usual funny nice guy shtick. Or maybe not so nice because he's actually an artist here. He does a lot of sarcastic one-liners and pop cultural references more or less of what he did in his role as Deadpool and yeah it's still welcome even though not every quip lands because it breathes life to an otherwise dull by the books Netflix action film and then he has this awesome action scene here in the beginning involving scaffoldings that pretty much evokes Jackie Chan but yeah sometimes what I found about this character is it could be inconsistent he can be clumsy whenever the narrative requires a punchline which I felt odd but anyway we also have Dwayne Johnson here who's the straight up guy more of the serious foil to the character of Reynolds here even if his role in here it does not really make any distinction to the previous roles he played his screen presence alone makes this movie immensely likable and watchable and yeah the movie even takes him into this forest 
at one part of the movie and it's just evoking a lot of Jumanji and Jungle Cruise vibes. And then we have Gal Gadot who's the villain of the film. It's not really a menacing villain but more of a wink wink villain which is I guess suited for the film because it's more of a silly nature type of film. It looks like she's having fun playing this role because her usual roles are no nonsense hero type kind of role so it's nice to see her do something different. Her and Dwayne Johnson here has some sort of a flirtatious adversary going on. Yeah but when it comes to the plot obviously I haven't even talked about the plot because it's just inconsequential. We have three eggs here which are believed to be once owed by Cleopatra or so we are told. The thieves are after them for their own gain. Now is there something magical that will happen here once those eggs are combined? Don't expect because I did the research and these three eggs are actually fictitious so yeah. <laughs> They just created this MacGuffin which by cinematic standards is not really important when it comes to the understanding of the film or your appreciation. It's just the driving force so yeah. And the whole plot is just born out of Netflix algorithm. I'm pretty sure the brainstorming process for this one went like this like okay we need a action set piece involving a Russian prison then we need to show is some helicopters and bazookas then take the story somewhere else to an Amazon forest somewhere in South America or whatever and we also need some masquerade party we also need to crack a heavily guarded vault like putting out the action set pieces that a viewer might be accustomed to see in previous action films and just build a narrative around it so I'm, it's not necessarily the worst idea but it certainly shows here that the plot is just inconsequential. Maybe they could have used some budget to refine that script but this film is just targeted to increase Netflix subscriptions to appeal to the masses and not really to appeal to the critics so if that is the goal then this movie succeeds. And the actions, they're well choreographed, we have a lot of dynamic Hollywood shots in here, some drone shots and we have a globe trotting aspect to this movie because it hops from one fantastic location to another and by fantastic location I mean CGI locations because apparently they shot the whole thing in Atlanta and just used CGI backgrounds. Well I think it's decent and I think it's convincing enough maybe not so much when it comes to the Russian prison setting where you can tell that of course they can't really shoot in that area but it's forgivable enough. Now when it comes to originality, I don't think I even considered originality as a factor. I mean upon seeing the trailer for this movie, I don't have the biggest expectations. There's nothing really here that's worth mentioning when it comes to its original ideas. There's no world building involved. So it's just a rip off of many films that you've seen before. Most especially on old school action films, Raiders of the Lost Arks, maybe some Mission Impossible in there and Ocean's Eleven. And sometimes the dialogue stops to allow its characters to hash out their daddy issues out of nowhere and when that happens I'm like mmm that's cringe. So yeah uh, I mean it's like a glowing symbol like hey it's time to humanize these characters now care about them but you know there's nothing really much here when it comes to death it's just mostly banter and just functional exposition they don't really drag the expositions too much just to provide justification why characters need to move from one location to another even if it's not entirely convincing the plot moves quickly so you will question it less and just turn off your brain every single complaint that you're gonna hear from this movie is probably true but one thing that really trumps them is if this movie is enjoyable and for me I did enjoy watching this movie. Sure there's a moment in this movie that I feel like I'm just waiting it for to be over but then it pulls out this one last minute twist that I did not see coming so it kind of explains a quarter of the unintelligible things that happen here and then the movie kind of asks its audience like who's the dumb one now huh? So I gotta give it to them because I completely underestimated this movie. It's not the most mind-blowing twist ever but I certainly did not expect that coming. So overall Red Notice is definitely formulaic but its familiar narrative makes it easy to follow and it's definitely enjoyable at the moment. 
though at hindsight i'm not sure if i'm gonna remember this movie because it's destined to be one of the most watchable or most watched it is the most watched netflix film but i would say this is also one of the most forgettable films that i've seen this year and take away those stars this movie will be a dud but sure enough the formula that we have here typical chase banter explosion then fight scenes chase again is an old age formula when it comes to hollywood that still works on a tv screen and i would say that i am cheated by this movie because i just watch it on netflix maybe if i watch this on the cinemas i will feel like i got a bad deal here but this movie pretty much convinces you that the two hours you spent are just okay enough like you could do better for sure but it's not completely a waste of time so i'm gonna give red notice a three out of five stars definitely a cinematic comfort food and those three stars belongs to its three stars and there is a hinted sequel at the end of this movie and guess who will be watching this guy so how about you guys have you seen red notice are you going to watch a sequel if there is let me know what you think in the comment sections down below also if you enjoyed watching this video hit that like and subscribe to me for weekly reviews of movies and tv shows thank you so much guys for watching until then i'll see you all on the next one